हरे कृष्णा जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय निनंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय निनंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय निनंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद वी कंटिन्यू रीडिंग फ्रॉम चैतन्य चारितमृत आदि लीला चैप्टर सेवन Uh, we have been hearing the glories of chanting the holy name so now we continue text 97 krishna name ye ananda sindhu ashwadan brahmananda tara age khato daka sama translation and purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta samishla prabhu pa compared to the ocean of transcendental bliss that one tastes by chanting the hari krishna mantra the pleasure derived from impersonal brahman realization brahmananda is like the shallow water in a canal so here uh, in bhakti rasamrit sindhu 1.1.38 it is stated bhakti rasamrit sindhu is uh, the bhakti shastra which is written by shila rupa goswami based on the teachings of lord chaitanya Shila Rupa Goswami is one of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. He is the leader of the Goswamis of Vrindavan, and he was especially empowered by Lord Chaitanya to give us all this, uh, all the uh, knowledge about devotional service. And so he's written many books, and one of the most important books is Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu, which Shila Prabhupada. translated as nectar of devotion brahman brahmanando bhavet esha chet para dha guni kritah naiti bhakti sukham bodhe parmanu tulam api if brahmananda the transcendental bliss derived from understanding impersonal brahman were multiplied a million times such a quantity of brahmananda could not compare with even an atomic portion of the pleasure relished in pure devotional service so shila rupa goswami is saying that the pleasure one gets being situated on the brahman platform realizing i am spirit soul understanding completely i am not the body so i am spirit soul so at that position that pleasure is very great because there is no more material miseries no more the miseries of the body the soul is naturally happy now if that pleasure is multiplied million times ha huh? so it's already a very great pleasure but now you multiply that pleasure 1 million times it cannot even compare to an atomic portion of the pleasure of pure devotional service so we can understand that the pleasure which we can which we can feel when we engage in pure devotional service is like an unlimited ocean of pleasure unlimited the more we dive into it the deeper we dive into it the more blissful we can feel there is the, it, it's it's not that oh the pleasure is going to finish no it is unimaginable unlimited pleasure सो साक्षात्कारुखाने ब्राह्मी अगत गुरु मै डियर लॉर्ड ओ मास्टर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स सिंस आई हैव डायरेक्टली सीन यू माय ट्रांसेंडेंटल ब्लिस हैज टेकन द शेप ऑफ अ ग्रेट ओशन बीइंग सिचुएटेड इन दैट ओशन आई नाउ रियलाइज all other so called happiness to be like the water contained in the hoof print of a calf so this is a verse from hari bhakti sudodhaya 14.36 the transcendental bliss enjoyed in pure devotional service is like an ocean whereas material happiness and even the happiness to be derived from the realization of impersonal brahman are just like the water in the hoof print of a calf so hari bhakti sudodaya it is giving us 
kind of an idea of the happiness that we can experience. It is said in the material world, the happiness that we experience is like a drop of water in the desert. You know, desert is very, very vast and it's so scorching heat and we just get a drop of water there. And so that is the happiness that we are experiencing here in the material world. And can you imagine that drop of happiness is what is still keeping us attached to the material world. Now, if we get situated on the platform of Brahman, that I, Aham Brahmasmi, I am the spirit soul, that water is as, as much as which is in the hoof print of a calf. You know, a cow's baby, a calf, that's a hoof print, tiny. So it's just like a puddle of water, a tiny, tiny puddle of water. Now, compared to a drop of water, it is huge. It's huge compared to a drop of water. So compared to the happiness we are receiving in the material world, the happiness of the Brahman realization is, wow, it's so much unimaginable. But, but the happiness derived from pure devotional service is like an unending ocean unlimited ocean. So if you compare, uh, if we compare, the happiness in the material world is like a drop of water. The happiness in the Brahman realization is like the water in a hoof print of a calf. And the water in uh, uh, the happiness that we can experience in pure devotional service is like an unlimited ocean of bliss. And so this is what we are the scriptures are all telling us, don't just be happy with this drop of water which you're getting in the material world. Rise up, engage in pure devotional service and experience the highest possible bliss that we are able to experience. And dive into the ocean of bliss, of pure devotional service. This is what all the scriptures are telling us, bringing us to that point. Pure devotional service begins from the liberated platform. So it is liberation and beyond. It is, and so not only the, do we experience the pleasure of being liberated, but much more, much more. Why? Because you're personally associating with God. God is the reservoir of all pleasure. You know, if we, the reservoir of water, if we go to the reservoir of water, there's so much water there. Similarly, if we are in touch with God, Krishna, Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasure, then that pleasure is unimaginable. Prabhura Mishta Vakya Shuni Sanyasi Ragana Chitta Feri Gela Kahe Madhura Vachana. After hearing Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all the Mayavadi sannyasis were moved, their minds changed, and thus they spoke with pleasing words. So this pastime we have been hearing is that the leader of the Mayavadi sannyasis in Varanasi, Prakashananda Saraswati, he was telling Lord Chaitanya, why aren't you doing meditation? Why aren't you studying the Vedanta Sutra instead of just chanting and dancing like a fanatic with all the other fanatics? And so Lord Chaitanya was explaining to him the glories of the holy name and that how the holy name can bring one to love of God and that how all the scriptures have been glorifying the chanting of the holy name, specifically uh, for this age of Kali. And that how, um, also Lord Chaitanya told him that how the happiness that one can derive in chanting the holy name is much higher than just thinking I am, I am a soul. So after hearing their minds changed, the Mayavadi sannyasis met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Varanasi to criticize the Lord regarding his participation in the Sankirtana movement, which they did not like. This demoniac nature of opposition to the Sankirtana movement perpetually exists. As it existed in the time of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, similarly, it existed long before that, even in the time of Prahlad Maharaj. He used to chant in Sankirtan, although his father did not like it. And that was the reason for the misunderstanding between the father and the son. So Prabhupada is pointing out, just as the Mayavadi sannyasis were against the chanting of the holy name, he said perpetually it has been existing. 
Prahlad Maharaj was five years old only. And he did not like the chant that his son, uh, Prahlad Maharaj's father, Hiranya Kashipu, did not like that my son is chanting the holy names of God. So in Bhagavad Gita 7.15, the Lord says, Namam duskritino mudaha prapadyante naradamaha maya yafra prahrata jnana asuram bhavam ashritaha. Krishna says this in Bhagavad Gita chapter 7, text 15. He says, those miscreants who are grossly foolish, who are lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons, do not surrender unto me. So Krishna is very clearly saying in the Bhagavad Gita, which kind of four, he says, four types of pious people surrender to me. And four types of people don't surrender to me. First, he says four types of pious people, those who are seeking wealth, those who are in distress, those who are uh, inquisitive, and those who are searching for knowledge. Uh, but the qualification is that they are pious. That's why they are coming to Krishna. Uh, and then, and, and it's, it's very good, no matter what is our reason, we should come to Krishna. Come, come to Krishna, to Krishna's door. That is the beginning. Now Krishna is saying there are four kinds of people who don't come to me, who don't surrender to me. Those miscreants who are grossly foolish. Foolish, he's telling they are very foolish. Lowest among mankind. Knowledge is stolen by illusion. And who are atheists. They don't surrender to me. These are Krishna's words. He's himself saying this in Bhagavad Gita. The Mayavadi sannyasis are asuram bhavam ashritaha which means that they have taken the path of the asuras, demons, who do not believe in the existence of the form of the Lord. So if we, if we believe that there is no God, that God is one or that God is supreme, then we are being atheists. If we think I am God, you are God, everyone is God, that is atheism. Because that's denying the supreme position of God. We are not God. We are not God. Only God is God. But if we think, okay, I'm, I, I'm going to become God one day, then we are denying the position of God. Then we are being atheist. So we should, we should understand these matters and, and uh, understand and hear from Krishna with submission what he's trying to say. And not do these things. The Mayavadi say that the ultimate source of everything is impersonal. And in this way, they deny the existence of God. Saying that there is no God is direct denial of God. And saying that God exists, but has no head, legs, or hands, and cannot speak, hear, or eat, is a negative way of denying his existence. So some people outrightly say there is no God. Whereas some people say, oh, there is God, but he does not have a form. Means he does, he's not a person. Means he cannot eat or speak or do anything. He's not a person. That is also denying the existence of God. Only by just sugarcoating it. But it's still atheism. Why? Because God exists. And we are denying his existence. That is, uh, you know, like we are existing. And somebody says, no, you don't exist. How would we feel? How would we feel? Say, hey, I exist. What do you mean I don't exist? A person who cannot see is called blind. One who cannot walk is called lame. And one who has no hands is called helpless. One who cannot speak is called dumb. And one who cannot hear is called deaf. The Mayavadi's proposition that God has no legs, no eyes, no ears, and no hands is an indirect way of insulting him by defining him as blind, deaf, dumb, lame, helpless, etc. Therefore, Although they present themselves as great Vedantists, they are factually maya, maya pahrata jnana. In other words, they seem to be very learned scholars, but the essence of their knowledge has been taken away. So we should be careful not to hear from people whose knowledge, who have misunderstood knowledge, who do not have the clear knowledge. Uh, uh, from, we should not hear from people who are ex denying the existence of God. 
So we should hear from the devotees, the, the devotees, because if somebody says God does not exist, he has no hands, no legs, oh, God is everywhere, then we are undermining the importance of God. Undermining. We are calling, as, as Prabhupada is pointing out, we are insulting God. We are insulting him by saying him, oh, he's blind, he's deaf, he's lame, helpless. Although we are pretending, we are speaking good, big words, we are pretending, we are scholars, we are pretending we can speak very nicely, sweetly, eloquently, but this is what we are doing. Insulting God, you know, and that's not nice. Impersonalists, Mayavadis always try to defy Vaishnavas because Vaishnavas accept the Supreme Personality as the Supreme Cause and want to serve him, talk with him and see him. Just as the Lord is also eager to see his devotees and talk, eat and dance with them. These personal exchanges of love do not appeal to the Mayavadi sannyasis. Therefore, the original purpose of the Mayavadi sannyasis of Benaras in meeting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was to defeat his personal conception of God. So the sannyasis of Varanasi, they were, they wanted, they were criticizing Lord Chaitanya and they wanted to defeat the philosophy that God is a person, personal conception of God. Whereas the devotees are always want to be with God. God and the devotee want to be with each other, have a loving relationship with each other, eat together, dance together, talk together. You know, have loving pastime together, loving relationship. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, however, as a preacher, turned the minds of the Mayavadi sannyasis. They were melted by the sweet words of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and thus became friendly and spoke to him also in sweet words. Similarly, all preachers will have to meet opponents, but they should not make them more inimical. They are already enemies. And if we talk with them harshly or impolitely, their enmity will merely increase. We should therefore follow in the footsteps of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as far as possible and try to convince the opposition by quoting from the Shastras and presenting the conclusion of the Acharyas. It is in this way that we should try to defeat all the enemies of the Lord. So Srila Prabhupada is saying that how Lord Chaitanya is being an example of a perfect preacher. He is speaking very sweetly to the Mayavadi sannyasis and how by speaking sweetly to them, he's explaining to them the glories of the holy name. He's explaining to them the truth and this is how their mind changes them. They become devotees. So Prabhupada is saying, we should also try to do that not speak harshly to the opponents or impolitely. Otherwise, they will become more offensive. We don't want to make anyone more of offensive. We want to uh, bring everyone back to God because love of God is in everyone's heart. We just want to remind everyone of that. And yeah, let's present the conclusion of the Shastras and the Acharyas always speak on the basis of the Shastra, the scriptures. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for listening in and joining in. Chaitanya Charitamrita ki jai, Shla Prabhupada ki jai. So this is still, I'm sorry. sorry, so I just have one question. So this is still that we are talking about the um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the conversation with Hadaipan. No, not Hadaipan. It is still Prakashananda Saraswati. Prakashan Saraswati, right? They're yes. still in the conversation. In, yes, he's in Varanasi speaking to the sannyasis over there. Yeah. That's the same that's the same pastime yeah. that's going on. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So we'll stop here for today then. Hare Krishna. Hare Bol. <laughs>